This truly is a martyr who shed his blood for the name of Christ, who did not fear the threats of judges, but attained the heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, the church celebrates two saints on the calendar today, St. Sebastian and St. Fabian, both martyrs. St. Fabian, a pope and martyr, we will be celebrating this Mass in his particular honor today. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, glory of your priests, grant, we pray, that help by the intercession of your martyr, St. Fabian, we may make progress by communion in the faith and by worthy service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. <clears throat> the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth in holy splendor. Before the day star like the dew I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever, in the line of Melchizedek. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil? To, slay, to save life rather than to destroy it. But they remained silent. 
Looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. From the very beginning, the church has always needed great examples of encouragement because to live the gospel is a very difficult thing at times. And we may be facing those times coming into the near future in a way that we have not experienced perhaps in some time, which is why we need encouragement to be faithful to God, faithful to the gospel, faithful to the church, faithful to everything that we believe in, the ideals that guide us not only as Catholics, but as Americans as well. This will be put to the test. There's no question about that. Which is why we need to know where will we find the encouragement and strength that we need in the weeks and months moving forward. We will certainly find it in the grace of God first and foremost. This you know, but you will need to remind other people, I think, in your lives about this. There will be those who will be quite discouraged, very discouraged, perhaps even on the point of despair at times. And it is our duty, our responsibility, our mission and vocation to provide them with the encouragement that they need to stay strong in the midst of opposition, persecution, whatever it may be. The church has always understood this from the very beginning. In our gospel today, we were reminded that Jesus himself faced this opposition. From the very beginning of his public ministry, there were those who took counsel against him to put him to death. And Jesus gives us the supreme example of the courageous priest, certainly, the great strong leader, the one who had absolute trust and confidence in the plan of his heavenly father, even when that meant for him personally, Jesus, his own suffering being unjustly accused of many terrible things, being put to death. He accepted all of that, of course, as part of God's plan for the salvation of the world, to forgive our sins, to redeem us and the world, and to open up the gates of heaven so that we might live a life of hope. Encouragement, of course, we know, gives us strength in our hope. Our first reading today from the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that God gifted his church with a priesthood a spiritual authority and power indeed which is meant for the salvation of souls, to encourage everyone to stay strong in their faith, to resist temptation, to face the attacks of the devil and the evil spirits with confidence and trust in God. This priesthood remains forever, and this priesthood is at the heart of why the church's sacramental ministry will continue to be, for all of you, a great source of encouragement And we will do our best to continue to provide generously that beautiful grace, which we will certainly need in great abundance moving forward. We know that the church has always relied on the good example and the intercession of the holy ones who have gone before us. So many saints, St. Fabian and St. Sebastian, particularly today on this January 20th, but we know that there are so many saints whose lives, again, are a great source of encouragement. They too faced opposition, they faced persecution, they faced misunderstanding. They were called to great examples of courageous leadership and witness in the church, in their families, in their communities, in society. This is greatly needed today. We are aware of this. And we simply pray that we will all be responsive to the way in which God will use us to provide that encouragement in times of difficulty. We have so much to be thankful for as Catholics and as Americans, certainly, but it's going to be a difficult time for the church, difficult time, of course, here in our country as well. But despite those difficulties, we must remain the ones who will give that strong and courageous example, that we will remain faithful day by day. We will continue to grow in our love for God and for each other. We will continue to be a light shining in the darkness, whatever that may look like, We will be the ones that will give an example of love and service to others, despite whatever difficult circumstances there may be. We will defend the sanctity of human life from conception to natural birth, 
religious freedom, all of the issues which you have heard preached here in our community for these past months. This is our vocation, indeed. This is our mission. This is the beautiful responsibility. So let us pray through the intercession, particularly today, of these great martyrs who gave their life in witness to the faith, providing us with that encouragement, St. Sebastian, St. Fabian. May we also look especially to the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and also St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph, that we will continue to pray for the conversion of minds and hearts for all of those who have not yet lived or accepted or would defend the gospel here in our country as well as all over the world. And we, may we remain strong, strong in our witness. May we grow in our faith despite these difficult times. And may God provide us the light and grace to continue to provide encouragement to all those who will need it. Uniting our hearts and minds together in faith, let us place our petitions before our loving God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may Christ continue to guide and strengthen them in their ministry of leadership within the church for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. <laughs> for all those who exercise civil authority, especially here in our nation, that they may govern according to the wisdom and laws of God respecting especially the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death and the exercise of religious freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that we may continue to be a light in the darkness, that our witness may remain strong, that we may be a source of encouragement for others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the sick and suffering, especially for Pedro Nogues, May God bless them with healing and strength in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the faithful departed, especially for the repose of the soul of Marjorie Suzanka, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may be welcomed into the joy and peace of eternal life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, hear our needs that we present to you this day. Help us through your gracious mercy to remain strong in our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may the offerings we bring in commemoration of Blessed Fabian be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty, just as the shedding of his martyr's blood was precious in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your martyr Fabian, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, in which, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Fabian and Sebastian, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, its assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, 
Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Fabian faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.